Great. So our second speaker this morning is Sean Kavanagh. And I guess Sean doesn't need an introduction to most of you. Um, but so Sean is a PhD student in the CDT for Advanced Characterization of Materials, which is a joint CDT between um, UCL and Imperial. And so Sean happens to be co-supervised by David and myself. Um, so Sean started in October 2019. So I had about six months in person running back and forth between said Kensington and um, Bloomsbury before the lockdown hit. But I think it doesn't seem to have held him back in terms of his research progress. And today, I guess Sean's gonna be telling us about efficiency improvement via enhanced absorption in silver bismuth sulfide nanocrystal solar cells. Uh, yeah, thanks Aaron for the introduction. Um, it says, uh, my name is Sean, if you haven't met me, and I'm in um, both uh, research groups. Um, and I primarily work on, uh, I suppose, emerging photovoltaic materials and uh, defects. Um, you know, people often ask me what the best thing about being in the two research groups is. Um, and I have to say, without doubt, it's uh, getting to do twice as many group meeting and paper talk presentations. Um, yeah, I just love the sound of my own voice. Um, no, I, I joke, I do love being in uh, both groups. And uh, with that said, today I'm going to speak about um, a major improvement in the power conversion um, efficiency of silver bismuth sulfide nanocrystal solar cells uh, via enhanced uh, absorption behavior. So uh, silver bismuth sulfide is known to crystallize in two polymorphs. So that's the trigonal or, or three bar M phase, um, as well as the disordered rock salt or FM three bar M uh, phase. And so this is the one that's shown on the right, the cubic rock salt phase, where you have um, see sulfur as the anion and you have these M S six octahedra, where the metal is either uh, silver or bismuth. So the ordered trigonal phase is thermodynamically favored at room temperature, uh, but the cubic phase is known to be kinetically stabilized during uh, nanocrystal synthesis. And these materials show a band gap in the range of one to two electron volts, depending on the synthesis conditions. So depending then on uh, what phase you get and what the size of your crystallites are, or nanocrystals in this case. <clears throat> Okay, so what our uh, experimental collaborators in uh, ICFO in Barcelona uh, have found is that annealing their samples after uh, synthesis or post-synthesis annealing strategy results in this major improvement in the optical absorption going from here from the pre-annealed sample up to samples um, annealed at 200 degrees Celsius. Um, and this comes alongside a sharpening of the uh, X-ray diffraction peaks. So from microscopy analysis of the annealed samples, they confirm that annealing results in nanocrystal uh, growth um, up to around 50 nanometers for the, um, the 200 degrees Celsius nano, uh, or annealed samples. So this enhanced optical absorption yields a significant improvement in the efficiency of these solar cells and uh, breaks the previous world record efficiency of 6.3% with a new uh, 8.8% uh, certified performance. So our um, question was basically what's happening during this annealing that gives the improved optical absorption and hence improved uh, photovoltaic efficiency. So is it down to just size effects with bigger nanocrystals giving better absorption or is there some increase or homogenization in the cation disorder in this material that also plays a role? So to try and answer these questions, our computational strategy was, was as follows. So first to model both the uh, ordered or minus 3M phase and the totally disordered uh, cubic rock salt structure uh, for this using a special quasi random structure generated with the ATAT package and then compare the thermodynamic, electronic and optical properties between these two polymorphs uh, basically comparing the two limits of cation order and fully random disorder and see if this gives any insight to what might be going on. 
So I mentioned there uh, special quasi random structures, and um, this is essentially kind of our go to strategy at the moment for modeling disordered materials or uh, disordered alloys. So um, in this case, our question is how do we model this uh, FM minus 3M rock salt structure where silver and bismuth uh, randomly occupy the metal cation sites uh, with 50% partial occupancy? And then how do we do that using periodic density functional theory? So you can't just tell VASP uh, at the moment anyway to put half a silver atom and half a bismuth atom at each site. And so we have to come up with a different strategy. So at present, the most popular approach, uh, given its relative accuracy and moderate cost, is uh, this the SQS approach. So here, what we do is we generate a supercell structure where atoms are arranged in order to match the radial correlation functions that you would get for an infinite, uh, perfectly random um, structure. So correlation functions, uh, I think, is one of those terms that at first seems like it might be something complicated, but it's essentially just how many silver atoms are beside other silver atoms um, or near bismuth atoms, um, et cetera. So uh, the kind of cation cation pair correlations. So in a perfectly random arrangement, the chance of bismuth being beside silver should be the same as silver being beside bismuth with this kind of 50-50 uh, distribution. And so this allows disordered materials to be modeled uh, using periodic density functional theory with re relatively um, modest supercell sizes. So here is the uh, SQS supercell that was generated um, in this study. So comparing to the ordered trigonal phase on the right, we see that the SQS supercell has essentially the same structure, but now with silver and bismuth uh, arranged quasi randomly on this uh, cation sub lattice. And here again, just showing the cations for clarity. You see this kind of quasi random uh, sort of arrangement here. Yeah. So, um, the first thing we found uh, just by doing structural relaxations is that both PB sol and HCO6 are found to do a fairly good job in reproducing the experimental lattice parameters for both phases, uh, though HCO6 does in both cases get it much closer, so less than 1% uh, difference compared to experiment for both phases. Um, interestingly, if we look at the bond lengths in these cases, we see that the silver sulfur bond lengths have a surprisingly strong dependence on the functional choice. So for both polymorphs, we see a pretty uh, significant difference in this silver sulfur, silver sulfur bond length um, comparing from PB sol to HSCO6, uh, while the bismuth sulfur bond lengths remain uh, the same in, upon switching the functionals. Um, so similar behavior has been witnessed in other mixed metal chalcogenides, so namely the Kesterite family. And I, don't know, I, I would propose that a possible source of this dependence is perhaps a greater localization of the uh, valence silver D states under hybrid DFT, uh, enhancing the antibonding interactions with sulfur and thus lengthening the silver sulfur bond. But I would be curious to hear if anyone um, has any thoughts on this. Uh, though in the overall scheme of this study, it's a relatively minor, uh, minor point. Okay. So using the regular solution approximation, we can obtain an estimate of the bulk order disorder transition temperature. And in this model, the enthalpic and entropic vibrational electronic and volume change contributions uh, in going from order to disorder are neglected which in this case is certainly a reasonable approximation as the volume per atom doesn't change significantly between these two phases. So they're quite similar um, on that front. And both materials have band gaps much greater than the thermal energy. So the dominant contribution to the entropy difference and hence the temperature uh, dependence of the relative formation energies uh, is the configurational, configurational entropy boost upon having randomized cations in the disordered phase. Uh, which can be determined using some uh, simple maths and Stirling's approximation. So under the highest level of theory employed, so uh, HSCO6 which has been over coupling on the HSCO6 relaxed uh, SQS supercell, we predict a bulk uh, thermodynamic transition temperature of 580 degrees Kelvin uh, in pretty good agreement with the experimental range of 500 to 620 uh, degrees Kelvin. 
What is also found experimentally, however, which is important to note, is that if you rapidly precipitate these nanocrystals out of solution, as they have done in uh, Barcelona, they will be kinetically stabilized in the uh, rock salt phase at room temperature, even though thermodynamically speaking, this is actually a metastable phase um, at this temperature. Uh, calculating the electronic structure, we find that the trigonal phase on the left um, has a higher band gap than the disordered phase, as expected, and is also um, indirect with a large difference of 0.7 electron volts between the fundamental indirect gap and the direct gap, which of course would be uh, extremely unfavorable for a solar photovoltaic operation. Uh, in both cases, the valence band is composed of silver D states uh, here in red, um, and sulfur P states in blue, with a conduction band dominated by bismuth P in green, uh, as well as some sulfur P there as well. Uh, we also find lower carrier effective masses in the disordered phase, particularly for electrons, uh, and they should benefit carrier mobilities and exciton separation in this material. Um, so uh, firstly, we find that the disordered phase gives good agreement with experiment for the absorption spectrum of the annealed samples or the uh, shape of the absorption spectrum, as well as the uh, X-ray diffraction peaks, as I'll show later. Um, so we can, based off uh, these initial analyses of the kind of extreme limits of cation order and disorder, we can confidently, confidently conclude that the disordered phase is indeed the final state of these nanocrystals. So the question then becomes, what is the initial state? So prior to annealing, um, are they just smaller nanocrystals, but still with total disorder? Or is there some presence of a uh, partial cation order or in, in homogeneity in those um, samples? So given the optical and electronic differences between these two phases, so the uh, fully ordered and fully disordered uh, phase, Ooh, uh, in addition to the fact that annealing at the lower temperatures should actually still favor the ordered phase, we can conclude that the system is unlikely to be in the, in the ordered structure prior to annealing. So we know that our um, change in behavior is unlikely to be a transition from order to disorder uh, upon annealing. Okay, so if our initial state isn't the ordered trigonal phase and isn't total cation disorder either, then what is it, I suppose. Uh, so to investigate this, we used Jonathan Skelton's transformer package to enumerate all possible cation arrangements within our 32 atom SQS supercell, which comes out to 440 different structures. Um, we then relaxed and calculated the energies of each of these configurations using PBE Sol, with the aim to then analyze the thermodynamic and optoelectronic trends to see if this can give some insight as to what's going on. So how transformer works is you feed it your disordered structure or in practice, a supercell of this structure, telling it which sites uh, can have the elements interchanged and it enumerates all possible symmetry and equivalent configurations or arrangements of the atoms uh, on these sites within your supercell. So by symmetry equivalent, what I mean is that if you had a, for example, pointing on uh, a plane of silver atoms kind of along the top here uh, then bismuth in the middle plane and then silver again at the bottom uh, which in, the, in this case will also be required by periodic boundary conditions uh, this is actually the same as if you had a plane of bismuth here then a plane of silver here and a plane of uh, bismuth again here so to reduce the number of calculations these programs uh, so the ones that are listed here as well do essentially the same job they um, remove these symmetry equivalent configurations while tracking the number of these equivalent structures which contributes to the degeneracy of a given structure and hence its configurational entropy contribution so this program will then spit out a set of these different cation configurations ranging all the way from the ordered uh, trigonal phase um, so as shown here this uh, it will show, give you your trigonal phase, but as well as that, a range of other uh, configurations. So some of which will be what we call partially ordered. So um, kind of like minor perturbations on the ordered trigonal phase, all the way to stuff that looks more like the SQS supercell with uh, kind of randomly arranged cations. Okay. 
So calculating these energies, we find that the primary determinant of each uh, of the energy of each configuration is the nearest neighbor cation cation correlation, or in other words, the average number of silver bismuth pairs uh, versus silver silver or uh, bismuth bismuth pairs with greater cation self correlation. So more silver beside silver or more bismuth beside bismuth uh, corresponding to higher energies and also um, lower electronic band gaps due to the stronger bismuth bismuth interactions at the CBM and the silver silver interactions at the VBM. Uh, so this does also more dispersed bands and leading to these lower gaps. Uh, so, so essentially this means that the more similar the structure is to the ordered trigonal phase, which corresponds to maximum silver bismuth uh, coordination under periodic boundary conditions, the lower in energy it is. Uh, from other analyses that I'm not going to um, go into now, such as computing the owl sum point charge energies, the crystal orbital Hamiltonian populations, uh, strain energies, etc., we can conclude that the energies of different cation uh, sublattice arrangements are primarily determined by electrostatics, um, but that also strain effects, octahedral connectivity, orbital hybridization, and directional covalent bonding do also play an important role here. <laughs> So if we take a uh, kind of a closer look at this range of configurations, we can subdivide them into uh, three main regions. So up here, um, yeah, up here we have what we call inhomogeneous disorder. So um, with it corresponding to greater cation cation self correlation. So a lot of silver beside silver and bismuth beside bismuth. So you have these kind of local silver rich and bismuth rich regions. Down here, we have low energy, uh, partially ordered configurations corresponding to those I showed a couple of slides ago, which are similar, but not quite exactly the trigonal or, or uh, minus 3m phase down here. And then finally, kind of right in the middle, we have our SQS supercell, uh, which corresponds to homogeneous, fully random cation disorder, and which we are pretty confident is the final state of the nanocrystals. So firstly, looking at the X-ray diffraction, uh, diffraction behavior, if we take a closer look at the experimental XRD patterns, you notice something um, perhaps a little interesting. So these nanocrystal sizes given here on the left are determined, um, uh, are determined from peak fitting of these, the main peaks around here at 30 degrees. So using the Scherer formula to get an estimate of the crystallite size from your peak broadening, um, and also assuming the perfect rock salt crystal structure. However, microscopy analysis uh, actually suggested that these samples um, were approximately six to eight nanometers in size for both of the samples. So for both the pre-annealed and the 100 degrees Celsius annealed samples, uh, with little to no difference in the sizes between them, uh, slightly contradicting what the um, XRD peak fitting of, uh, based off these two peaks suggests. Moreover, if I take the perfectly disordered rock salt phase, as I've done here on the right, and calculate the expected broadened XRD pattern using the Scherer formula, um, I get this as shown here for a um, four nanometer crystallite. And the plots have been uh, kind of resized here to have the same uh, width to allow a direct comparison. So we see that if the nanocrystal uh, was actually four nanometers, the higher angle peaks up here should be much broader than is actually seen experimentally. Uh, and in fact, unresolvable for this guy uh, here. Um, what this tells us is that for some reason, the 30 degree uh, peaks here um, are broader than what you would expect given the nanocrystal size either they're not just broadened by purely size effects. Furthermore, while not immediately clear from looking at those um, XRD uh, patterns, but um, if we have a closer look at these peaks, we see that they also do not sharpen uh, uniformly and that uh, upon annealing as um, might be, as would typically be expected for a simple crystallite size increases, you'd have a kind of uniform sharpening of the peak but rather the uh, center point of the peaks here shifts to slightly higher angles upon um, annealing. 
So if we compare this to the predicted XOD patterns uh, for subsets of our transformer cation configurations, corresponding to various uh, varying levels of cation correlation, we see that firstly looking at the uh, partially ordered configurations in which we have a high degree of silver bismuth uh, coordination, the uh, width and position of our 30 degree uh, peaks remains relatively, relatively constant for um, across these uh, configurations. However, if we look at the other uh, region of these cation uh, configurations where we have um, a high degree of this uh, cation inhomogeneity, so a lot of cation self-correlation, um, we see uh, much broader peaks here, um, as well as a shift to slightly lower angles uh, with greater and greater inhomogeneous cation disorder, so more and more local silver rich and bismuth rich regions uh, kind of matching what they see experimentally, so broader peaks and at slightly lower angles. Okay, so now if we go on to look at the absorption trends, we find that uh, although the cation clustered inhomogeneous configurations do have lower band gaps, um, their absorption is actually quite weak compared to the fully disordered case. So uh, in particularly for the lower energy uh, cation configurations, so the kind of darker colored uh, configurations here, this is particularly apparent with severely reduced absorption compared to our S uh, homogeneous disorder case, so the SQS supercell up here. Um, and so, um, yeah, we find that these configurations while having lower electronic band gaps have uh, reduced um, uh, optical absorption. So uh, just to kind of quickly demonstrate the origin of this um, kind of weakened optical absorption is a spatial separation of the bismuth derived um, CBM here and the silver uh, sulfur derived uh, VBM here. Um, so when you have this uh, kind of cation separation, so in the, shown in the cation density plots here for these sort of inhomogeneous disorder cases, we have our local silver rich region, our local bismuth rich region, and this leads to a spatial segregation of the band extreme states, um, and over, thus leads to a weak optical transition dipole moment and thus uh, weakened optical absorption here. If you change this to the SQS supercell where we have homogeneous disorder, we get a homogeneous uh, kind of delocalized VBM and CBM as expected, thus resulting in enhanced optical absorption uh, at our band gap energy. Okay. So to conclude, we propose that the uh, partial inhomogeneous disorder is initially present in these nanocrystals, um, which seems to explain some of the uh, the trends we witnessed experimentally in the optical absorption and the X-ray diffraction behavior, which then thermalizes to homogeneous disorder upon annealing, in addition to increasing the nanocrystal size. Uh, through favorable orbital mixing, um, this produces greater delocalization of the band extrema and stronger optical transition moments, yielding enhanced optical absorption and improved record-breaking solar conversion efficiencies. Um, so yeah, thanks to our experimental collaborators in Barcelona, and of course, Dad1 and Dad2, um, and you all for listening. So well done, Sam. That was a good job. <laughs> uh, that was a really nice presentation, Sean.